welcome back to our YouTube channel. So excited to have you back for another video. And today's video is actually our most requested video of all times. I'm always getting this question to please make a step-by-step -step candle making tutorial. So that is exactly what I'm gonna bring you today. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how I make our luxury handmade candles. I'm going to give you some tips, some tricks that I personally use, and I'm also going to give you a list of materials that you need if you're interested in creating your own candle or if you're interested in creating your own candle company. So I'm really excited to bring you guys this and please stay tuned till the end of the video because I have a very huge announcement and surprise. So stay tuned for that. So without further ado, if you would like to learn or if you would like to watch how we make our candles step by step, just keep watching. I think that was a pretty good intro. I think I got it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so first things first is you're going to need a vessel. You're gonna need a jar of your choice. Right now, I have a 14 ounce jar, but the fill weight to this jar is 12 ounces. So this is the first thing you're gonna need is a vessel. Then you're going to need a wick. This is my wick of choice. I've purchased wicks from a lot of various companies. Uh, Candle Science happens to have my favorite wicks. And this one is the CD24 six inch pre-tabbed wick. These are my favorite. They do have, they're a mix of cotton and paper and they're all natural. They do not carry any toxins. So I really love these. The only downside, and I kind of just take it as its characteristic, it does mushroom up a bit more than other, than other wicks, but I do prefer these because I feel like the hot throw is better. It always has an even burn, and I really love these because of it. They also have the Eco Line. I like their Eco Line as well, but I did see a lot of suiting with the Eco Line and I did feel like it did not have as, a, as much of an even burn, so I have been preferring these. I also use wick stickers for the bottom of our jars to secure our wicks in place. You can purchase these anywhere, just Google wick sticker and you can find them. You're going to need a thermometer to measure the temperature of your wax. Very, very, very important to have this. Uh, you are going to need a scale. You're going to need a scale for, honestly, if you are a candle maker, if you have a candle company, you should have at least two of these. One to measure your wax, of course, and then to measure your packages for shipping. So I use this one, I got this off of Amazon. I have a wick bar here, but you're more than welcome to also use clothes pins. I have a bunch of clothes pins here. I am using the wig bar right now because my jar's width is actually about three, 3.5 inches. So the wig bar, are they're a little bit longer for me. So I'm using those right about now. If your jars are smaller, just use the clothes pins. They're much cheaper. And my new tool that I actually just bought is this easy wick setter. Um, I am making a lot of candles right now. Thankfully, our volumes of orders have increased. So this just makes it faster for me to wick our jars. Also, a measure cup for your fragrance oil, essential oils that you will be pouring into your vessels. And in back of me, I have two pots right now with boiling water. Right now, we are still using the double boiler method. However, we have placed an order for a Presto pot, which will make this process go a little bit faster. So as soon as I get our Presto pot, I will be doing an updated video, like a fun video with the Presto pot. But I did want to do the double boiler for now because I know a lot of people are still using double boilers to make the candles. You're also going to need a pitcher. These are my two trusty pitchers I've had since the beginning. I probably need to purchase another one. But I have two pouring pitchers right here. And then for mixing, I do use a wooden spoon to make sure that all the materials that my wax comes into encounter with is all natural. So I use a wooden bamboo spoon. 
there and then I sometimes if I need to go in and do a little bit more mixing I have this wooden stick as well and of course the star of the show our wax let me see if I can pick this up for you guys this is a 50 pound box of wax I am using the Cargill or Cargill I'm not sure how you say that but I am using the nature wax C3 soy wax for our candles I did use the GB 464 in the past I did use it for a very long time, I really like it. However, I do feel like this wax has a better hot throw and I am all about a concentrated candle. So I did go with this and this has been amazing. I really did see an increase in my sales as soon as I switched to this wax. So just a little pointer, that's my pointer number one. So let's get started. Okay, so first things first, we are going to measure our wax. So I have our scale and what I'm going to do is I'm going to press it on and I'm going to make sure that I put my pouring pitcher on the scale so it is so it's balanced with the scale so it's not count, counting the weight of the actual pitcher. It's just going to count the weight of the wax that I'm going to be pouring in here. I actually just made the switch to grams instead of ounces. So I have found that by swi switching over to grams instead of ounces and actually measuring out how many grams of wax can fit in one vessel has saved so much wax for me. So I've measured out and I'm actually gonna link a video down below of a girl here on YouTube that actually helped me do this. And she is super sweet, super informative. So add her video down below if you would like to find out how to measure exactly the amount of wax and fragrance oil that goes into one jar. That way you are able to measure how many candles you are making and you will never have any extra wax. So that's very informative and it has helped me save a lot of money if you think and then it also has helped me create exactly the amount of candles that I want to the tea. So in order for me to make one candle, I'm going to need 306 grams of wax and in this pitcher I can make about three candles. So I'm going to do 306 times three and that's going to give me 918 grams of wax. So I am going to measure 918 grams of wax to go in here and that's going to give me exactly three candles. Here we have it. 918 grams of soy wax which I will not add to my double boiler. I have about half of the pot filled with water. Uh, since we're going to be making a lot of candles, I just usually put more water in the pan because it goes, it starts evaporating and the water starts to get pretty low. So I like to add about half of the pan with water. Now that our wax is in the double boiler, we want to make sure that we're using our time and we are maximizing our time as best as possible. So what I do while the wax is melting, I start tabbing our jars. So, because now we have this beautiful little contraption here, this easy wick setter, I'm hoping this is going to save me time in wicking our jars, which is why I purchased it. I also purchased this because I wanted to make sure our wicks were perfectly in the middle. So you just stick it there and you tab it and boom, you're good. One of the most important questions is when should we pour our fragrance oil? So the best time, and I've read so many articles on this, and I've come to find that the best time to pour your fragrance oil is at 185 degrees. So you want to wait until absolutely all your wax has melted from your, pitch, your pouring pitcher. And then we want to bring it into either a towel or somewhere safe. You want to put it directly on your counter because you might burn your counter, so be very careful when removing the pitcher. But then we are going to measure the temperature and make sure it's at a 185 degrees. If not, we're just going to let it cool off for a couple minutes, not a long time. And then we're going to measure and pour our fragrance oil. I'm going to put it on here real quick. I have my thermometer. Turn it on and we're going to see what temperature this is at right now. So right now, it's actually perfect. It's at 100 and 
94 degrees. So we're gonna wait until it cools off to 185. It should take literally like five minutes, no, no more than that. So we're gonna set this off the side. We're gonna put that on top of a cloth right there. And we are going to measure our fragrance oil. So to measure our fragrance oil, I do exactly the same thing that I did with the wax. So I turn on my scale here. I put my tiny pouring pitcher right there. And I'm going to measure 102 grams of fragrance oil. This will give me 11% of oil per jar. So I've done my math, like I said at the beginning of this, I've done my math to measure exactly how much oil I need per jar and I am using 11% of fragrance oil. If you're a little bit confused about this, I will link a video down below that will help you measure out your oils, your fragrance, and it will help you decide how much you need for each vessel. Perfect. 102. We're gonna go back in with the thermometer and make sure the wax is at 185. It's actually at 179. It's okay, because I told you it cools down very fast, so this is very fast when you pour your fragrance oil. But no worries, if you're around this, like around five degrees, around the same temperature, no worries, you're still good. You just don't want it to get too cool. You do not want it to get below 175. So we're gonna pour our fragrance oil right there. Then we are going to grab our wooden spoon and I like to gently stir for 20 seconds. While I stir, I love to have, and I found when I have the temperature of the overall room to 70 degrees, I have it at a neutral uh, temperature. I do not get any sinkholes, craters, anything like that. Um, my tops do come off pretty even. And if I ever have any issues, I can always solve them with a heat gun. So if you're having a lot of troubles for some reason with your wax, it's not settling even, I do recommend investing in a heat gun. I'll put a little picture. Well, I can just show you what a heat gun looks like. It's right behind me. So now that I'm done stirring this for about 20 seconds, I move that and I pour right away. I pour right away. I used to wait till my wax cooled to 100 degrees to pour, which is absolutely insane. And I used to get so many sinkholes, it was crazy. But I pour right away and I let it settle and cure in the jar when it's still warm. And because we measured to grams, we have absolutely no wax left over. We have maximized all the wax that we poured in here from the beginning, and this is why I have found that measuring with grams as opposed to ounces is just way more practical, and it saves you so much time, and it saves you money, because you are not wasting all that wax. So what I do immediately, before any type of like residue that you may have in here, immediately, this is like so crucial to me. I pour hot boiling water in the pots because I'm going to continue using them so the hot water cancels out any residue of wax that may be left over in the pitcher. I do this, I shake it out well, I run it under extremely hot boiling water and then I clean it with a thick paper towel. Of course, please be careful while doing this. This, I leave the hot pour water and I leave it in my sink for a little bit. I believe our other pitcher is ready. I'm just gonna remove this quickly. Turn the heat down. We're going to, let me, I was microwaving some food. I got a little hungry. <laughs> Let's measure pitcher. So it's at 196, we're gonna wait for it to cool off again more quickly because it'll get to 185 very quickly. And we're going to measure our fragrance oil again. On places that you can find fragrance oil, you can find fragrance oil in a lot of different online stores, candle suppliers sell fragrance oil, test them out, try to be unique, you know. Um, a lot of candle makers just 
use the pre-bought ones and just pour it. I personally love to mix and try different scents out. I feel like that really sets my business apart from other businesses is the fact that I do like to mix and match and try out and create my own scents. I'm going to pour our fragrance oil again in our pitcher. Mix for 20 seconds. Again, I'm just repeating myself. Just, you know, repetition is good when you want to learn something. I'm actually gonna make, gonna pour some of our three wick jars. They're actually over here. And I'm gonna be pouring these in our three wick jars. We're going to go ahead and add these wick bars to make sure that the wicks are perfectly centered. So a great way to do this is to grab your wick, stick it straight up, add your wick bar, and attach it. And just eyeball. Since we did use that easy wick setter, the wick is already perfectly in the middle, so now your job here is to make sure you stabilize it perfectly in the middle with your wig bar. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'll show you guys some right now. Again, I am holding the wig straight up and I am setting the wig bar perfectly in the middle and securing it by entering the wig in between these little slot right here. So holding the wig straight up, wig bar right there, entering the wig in the slots and making sure they are perfectly in the middle. A great way to do this is to step back and make sure all the wicks are aligned perfectly in the middle. <laughs> so, do that. If you're wondering, I am creating the scent Femme right now. So now, the most important part other than this is to be patient and wait for your candles to cure. It will take about 24 hours for your candle to fully cure, and when it does, it should look something like this. So, wick perfectly in the middle, your wax should be perfectly even, and if it's not, I do recommend you purchase a heat gun. With a heat gun, if you have any types of imperfections on the surface of your candle, you're able to just melt off the surface and it'll give you an even layer. I actually haven't had to use this in a pretty long time with the tips and tricks that I've given you along in this video. With setting my home temperature to 70 degrees, making sure I pour at a high temperature, pouring my fragrance oil into the jar at 185 degrees and also I do feel like measuring to grams as opposed to ounces has helped because I don't have any excess wax left over. So guys, I am going to finish up candle making here. I really hope you guys enjoyed this step-by-step -step tutorial. Please, if I missed anything, let me know below. And of course, like, like I said at the beginning of the video, I have a huge surprise for you guys. Since we are almost at 500 subscribers here on YouTube, I want to host our first giveaway here on our YouTube channel. I am so excited for this. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you leave a comment below and that's it. You've entered our giveaway. I'm going to announce the winner of our giveaway a week from the day this video was posted and I will be personally sending you a message and I will be picking two winners that's right so two winners will win a soy joe handmade candle and i am so excited to host this here at our youtube channel our first ever giveaway so i'm really excited about this i want to say thank you so much for watching this video and hanging out with me today while we candle make i hope you guys learned so much all the information that I spoke about and any type of resource that I said in this video will be in the Dropbox below. Please let me know what your favorite part of the video is and don't forget to subscribe so you can enter our giveaway. As always, I will put our website and our social media channels right here and I will see you guys very soon. Good luck to the giveaway winners. Bye.